for it so here it is about to invade somebody else's home let's see who should i call oh i i got the number right here i got it right here you know who it is yeah i know who it is (laughs) What's going on? I know you know that music. I pick up the phone, hear some smooth ass beat. Right away, you should know who it is. <laughs> yeah, I know who it is. I, I How you, you been? I, I'm doing all right, man. I'm hanging in there considering you know the world's falling apart outside. But um, how are you doing, man? How's the family? Oh, yeah, everything is everything. You know, I work for myself. It's kind of kind of rough to do what i do and uh and have the world the way it is right now but are you are you getting work are you out there working are you doing things um no i'm doing you know bids and scheduling them for when they uh release us from this little holding tank they got us in right now but as soon as as soon as they uh lift the shelter in place and the schedule will be you know filling up so but we're hungry until then so we're just gonna have to make it you know do it with one paycheck instead of two yeah you uh you got the pantry stocked you got toilet paper all that you got everything you need out there oh shit while everybody was out there uh Buying up toilet paper. Don't get me wrong. I bought some toilet paper, you know, enough to, you know, for my little household. But I didn't hoard up no damn toilet paper. I went straight to the store and bought ammunition. Fuck yeah. the dumb shit. There you go. Is that for hunting or is that for protection? For both. Yeah. You know, I don't know what COVID-19 might turn these fools into zombies. Man. I can't take no chances. <laughs> hey, don't. Hey, man. <laughs> Don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. Um, my 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 cousin, she's she's got two homes. She's got a home here in California, over in Sonora, and she's got a home in Reno, Nevada. And over there in Reno, her dad's in that house right now. They're remodeling. I guess people mm-hmm. in the neighborhood are coming around and banging on doors and windows. And I don't know if that's a threat or if that's a joke, but it's her house and the neighbors' houses and stuff like that. So. There's a lot of crazy folks out there right now. There's there's a lot of people not taking this seriously and you know, to each their own, but but stay out of my yard, man. Stay out of my yard, stay out of Jen's yard for sure. You know, you already Well, they could, yeah, they could come in the yard as long as they don't step foot in the house, you know. They got a law saying you can't shoot nobody just in the yard, but they come through the door. That's their ass. So Who's that picking uh, in my window? C- right, CeeLo said it best. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody now. Yeah, right. man. So uh, do you miss sports yet, bro? I know you're mostly a football fan. You don't really get down with baseball or, or the NBA or anything like that, right? Mm, no. Um, I'm, I, I, I would feel like that's lightweight cheating. I only root for the Raiders. Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> Damn, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, how are you, well, how are you spending your time? How are you passing time right now? Oh, well, you know, I'm doing a lot of yard work. And then, you know, I'm homeschooling my son, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, you got to give teachers their props because they do a lot for our children that a lot of people don't realize. And times like these, you know, the responsibility falls on who teaching your children should truly fall on, which is you. Yeah. Um, but we don't really, we don't really, in this society, until something like this happens, you really don't see exactly what teachers do until they send you that big packet of work and say, this is what we've been working on, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Teachers, man, they're unsung heroes. Not all of them are great, but um, you know the ones that are out there really doing their job. They're they're fantastic people. Uh, I know you and I. We we went to the same school. We had g- the good and the bad. Uh, we remember both. But some of the good teachers I had, I still still hear their voice in my head when I'm about to do some dumb stuff. Um, you know. So, it, how are the kids taking it though? Are they, are they restless? Are they oblivious? What's going on with with your household? Oh well, they're not oblivious. I mean, they they know what's going on, but yeah, they do get restless. Fortunately for me, you know, I live on the edge of the metro and the country. Um, so if I go in, if I travel south just a few minutes, I'm in the heart of the city, and if I travel north just a few minutes i got lakes and public hunting grounds and all kind of stuff uh that we could go and do to keep away from people and you know observing social distancing but keep these kids uh from going stir crazy i didn't take them fishing a couple of times you know harvesting fish for protein at the house is always good Mm -hmm. keep us from having to go into the grocery store yeah um, that's where a lot of it's going down right now. I know uh, there's a lot of rumors circulating they're going to be closing the stores here in the Bay Area. I know today Kane Kane hit us up. He, they were posting signs on residents' uh, doors. If you you know any home in the San Francisco area has a, a a poster on the door now saying stay inside. You know all the social distancing rules and all that. And if you work for someone that requires you to be outdoors or, or to be out there in the public, your employers issued you papers because the National Guard is going to be out and about next week checking people that are outside. And if you don't have your papers, you're going to get cited. Um, so it's 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 going to ramp up a little bit more, I think, before things calm down. But um, just a house call, man, just calling to check in on you. You're a good man. It sounds like you're taking real good care of your family. But I, I'd be remiss if I didn't call you and talk some Raiders football like we always do. See, what you guys don't oh, know oh, is it, what the listeners don't know is there's a podcast outside the podcast, and that's when you call me or I call you, vice versa. We'll talk for a good, like, 90 minutes, and uh, <laughs> I always wish, like, damn, I should have recorded that shit. <laughs> um, so I, di- I didn't give you any notice, right? You didn't know I was calling you tonight. Um, no. So this is impromptu right now. But we did talk. We did talk last week, and you had some interesting takes. Uh, I don't know if you heard the, the the home invasion that I posted on, I think it was on Tuesday, or uh, shit, I don't even know what day it mm-hmm. is right now. Uh, I think I recorded it Sunday, posted it Monday. Today's Tuesday. I uh, talked to Pete, and we went over some of the free agent signings. He had some things to say about Witten, but you had some things to say about Witten that were different than what he said. So I wanted you to speak on that. And talk about your man Witten that you're very excited about with this squad, and why you're excited about him, and and why you think Jason Witten's going to make an impact on this team. Well, <clears throat> I'm not expecting him to have um, major impact on the field. I'm expecting him. Um, now, this is just my opinion. You know, I believe one day Witten will probably have a gold jacket on. I ain't saying it's going to be a first-round ballot or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But his experience at the position is invaluable. We got a lot of young talent at that same position. Um, and what he could could pass on to the next generation is invaluable. And I don't get me wrong, on the field, I look at Witten as another Hunter Renfro. You know, I'm not expecting, I mean, the old man to go out and catch the ball and Tony Gonzalez is way down the field. You know, them days, I believe, is well past Witten. But I believe he still knows how to get open. I believe Gruden can say, hey, it's third and six. Get me six fucking yards and catch the ball. And Witten can handle that. And so, um, which is going to allow, uh, everybody knows it's third and Renfro. You know, on third down, people are going to be keying in on Renfro now. He's not a rookie no more. They're going to be game planning for that. So, 
with somebody like Witten out there, it, it, it's going to you're going to have to pick your poison. OK, do do we double up Renfro or do we have to play him honest? Because these tight ends that we have, bro, it's about to change the game. So, you know, we'll see if it all comes out into fruition. But I believe that's the main reason why Gruden acquired, uh-huh. you know, acquired with. And he said himself it was a no brainer for him. Yeah. And when he said that to me, I was like, well, sh- it is a no brainer. You got that type of uh, experience to pass on to this to a young, great, talented core. I know I saw a lot of people like, well, why did we sign him? We got some. We got such great young tight ends. Why we get this old ass man for? It? Well, we got that old ass man so we could pull it from him and put it on the youngsters. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if he and, and he, in my opinion, he's making too much money, you know, guaranteed. I don't know all the particulars of his deal, but he's making five mil. I think it's four, but I'm saying I think it's four is guaranteed. Mm-hmm. You don't pay nobody four million guaranteed to cut him in training camp. I mean, it would have to be something way out there. I mean, like if he failed a physical or something like that, but I don't think that's going to happen or they wouldn't have signed him. So, yeah, man, um, he's going to be on the roster come week one. And with that being the case, you know, why would they guarantee that much money? To me, I look at it as like a, a tight end coach that actually plays on the field. So with that, if you're guaranteeing him, on this roster starting day or opening day. Um, you know, you got him, you got Foster Moreau, you got Derek Carrier, you got Waller. And then I think there's, there's a couple other tight ends that they've signed right now, which, you know, like Eric Tomlinson, uh, who may or may not make it <clears throat> all the way through, but are they right. going to, are they going to go into the season with that, with that, with those four players? Is it going to be Carrier, Witten, Moreau and Waller? And if not, who's the guy you take out of there? Are you going to take Derek Carrier out? You're not going to get rid of Foster Moreau. He's your young talent. Carrier's your other, I guess you could say, vet on the squad. You already know Waller's a lock. So it is, do you see this signing basically as a replacement for Derek Carrier? Um, maybe, but Foster Moreau didn't. He had a pretty significant knee injury, bro. Um, and there's no guarantees on how he's going to come out of that. We would love to keep him. You know, but we have to see if he's the player he was before he got hurt. Mm. Yeah, so you're right. It's a $4 million contract. There's $3.5 million guaranteed. That's not a lot of money. Um, his cap hit. That's a lot of money just for somebody to be going to training camp is all I'm saying. Right, I think right. it's going to be more than that. But we'll see. I could be wrong. Shit, Jen don't know everything. Yeah, the thing is, I don't think that money becomes guaranteed until week one. I and mean, we've seen it even with like Antonio Brown. They got to get through training camp first. And if they don't make the cuts, if Carrier beats them out, if if um, if Foster comes back healthy and, and that's that's cool, then then you know you could see that happen. But I'm I'm listening, man. I'm I'm hearing you out. I got to hear both sides of it. You know, I accept it. Definitely a wealth of knowledge, a lot of experience in there. Bringing Jason Witten in, that's. It's interesting, you know. Raider Raider fans always get excited when they get that big name. Um, Raiders are always good for at least one big name vet every off season, whether that person's, you know, at the peak of their career or at the end of their career. It seems like they're gonna they're gonna get one of those guys this year. It's Jason Witten. So, outside of that, who's your who's your favorite signing so far this off season? Is it Corey Littleton? Is it Malik? Who's your free agent right now? Who's your guy that you're you're jumping up and down about? I think everybody sleep on the defensive tackle, bro. We just saw it from Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know that everyone's sleeping on him, but um, I mean, definitely. The- well, not sleep. Yeah. Not sleep. Like I mean, but in the in the media, everybody's talking about Corey Littleton yeah. and the linebacker from Green Bay. I'm mm-hmm. not going to try to attempt to say his name until <laughs> I really learn it. Yeah, we'll just call we'll just call him <laughs> Nick for right now. Um, right. Um. <laughs> But, you know, and don't get me wrong, those were great signings. 
it really has changed uh, not only the dynamic of our defense, but gave us extreme flexibility in the draft. We've not pigeonholed at linebacker at 19. You know, Now, in my opinion, I think it would be great if we still went and grabbed the best linebacker available at 19. Um, whether it be Murray, Queen, whoever. Um, but it, it still gave us the flexibility that we don't have to do that. Mm. Um, yeah, but no, nah, the defensive tackle, what's his name? Malik, Malik Collins. Malik, yeah. Right. Hey, bro, that dude is a beast. I did a little bit of, when, when we got him, I did a little bit of film study, <laughs> look back at his highlights. And I know they are highlights. You know, everybody looks good <laughs> in a highlight. That's the yeah. whole purpose of a highlight reel. <laughs> yeah. But, but at the same time, um, the defensive line coach brought him here for a reason. He knows the guy. He knows the scheme. He's going to be able to take his influence, especially on Maurice Hurst and, and, and get some push up the middle. Where do quarterbacks truly hate pressure coming from? Right up they in their hate face. It from coming in up yep. the middle. Yep. Right. Because, because if it's coming from the outside, you can step up into the pocket. Bro, if it's coming up the middle, you have to roll out right into the defensive end. <laughs> right, right into Max Crosby. You know what I mean? <laughs> But um, I mean, and, that, and that's that's so the that's, that's the Belichick everything. template, right? That's the Belichick template. That's that New England defense in the playoffs. That's how they get rid of all these high level quarterbacks that they faced in the past. Pressure right up the middle. So yeah, they're paying attention to that. Every I mean, it's no secret. But um, you know, pair, pairing him with with Mo Hurst, like Pete and I were talking about the other night, I think that's going to be a pretty lethal combination. I like the way our defensive line is stacking up right now. You got uh, Cleland, who's going to be coming in healthy. Played very sick for the majority of last season. They moved him around a lot, too. So you saw him starting to find his identity at the end of the year. And I I expect big things from the Traders' defensive line going into the season. Uh, Pray to God that we have a season. So, yeah, that's that's good stuff, man. Uh, You've been following the draft talk? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, a lot of people think it's putting P.J. Hall on notice, and it may be. But I don't think so. I think the P.J. Hall is going to be relocated to what he originally got drafted for in the first place, mm-hmm. which is depth. Depth, yeah. So we'll depth see. and special teams, man. I don't, Hall's not on notice. He's too fresh. He's a draft pick. They're, they're, they're going to value that young talent. And, you know, P.J. Hall, we said it on the podcast when we drafted him. This kid's exciting. He's exciting as an underdog. He's got all the types of... He's got the story. He's got to make the build, the kind of dude you want to root for to see, you know, overcome and do well. But chances are this guy's not an every down player. He's not a starter. And uh, that's who he is. But that does not mean he's not valuable. That doesn't mean he's not exciting. You know, it it is what it is. Um, PJ Hall's a valuable member of this staff. And I think Pete called it out. Maybe it puts Hankins on notice. And that's a guy that I really like last year. Big old Hank the Tank, bro, uh, coming up in the middle. Yeah, but um, he was. I agree. He's no spring chicken, so you know <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's like I said, it's depth. It's a lot of bodies on that line right now, and it, and the fresher they can stay in that third and the fourth quarter, you know, quarterbacks, you don't notice. You don't notice. <laughs> um. So Derek Carr, man, we talked about Derek Carr a lot. Uh, we're getting we're getting pegged on social media for for hating on Derek Carr. Look, nobody here. In this studio, hates Derek Carr, but we are very critical of him. We said we would stop making excuses for him uh, last season if it didn't pan out. And I know statistically he had a great, great year. He had statistically the best, best year of his career. But we're going to remain critical on Derek Carr until he can pull this around. Now, you and I were having a conversation about this, and my gripe is, my bad, uh, didn't plan that hot take, but there it was, <laughs> there it was. Uh, that was that was uh, left over, I think, from the last show. Uh, my my thing is this: you know, a lot of people they want to give Derek Carr credit for 2016. You know, I know a lot went our way that year. There was a lot of luck, but there was a lot of comebacks that were that were helmed by Derek Carr. 
And um, we give them all the credit for that. That was the most exciting season of Raiders football that we've had in a very long time. And you want to credit Derek Carr for that. But people are saying, well, you can't blame Derek Carr for the losses. But if you're going to put him on a pedestal for the 2016 season, then, then you got to be critical of him for the last two years as well, last three years as well. And I know a lot's gone on in the organization. We talked about all of that. I think we're very fair on this show about Derek Carr and where he stands and, and how we feel about him. Uh, I never said that um, we should get rid of him. I was just outlining possible things that could have happened and things that, that might have made sense. I did say the Raiders were making run at Tom Brady. They made an early run on him, and then they pulled out, which was smart to do. I never rooted for Tom Brady. I said if he did suit up, and, and we've had this conversation on and off the air, Jan. I said if he did suit up, it would be weird. I'd have a sick feeling in my stomach. Uh, I'd be torn. I didn't know how to root for him. But we don't have to have that problem anymore. So Derek Carr is back in the saddle. Um, what I do like about how this year shapes up for Derek Carr and for the Raiders as an organization is they've plugged some holes on defense during free agency, which opens up the draft for them to focus on finally getting Derek Carr those weapons. Now, I know A.B. was was supposed to be one of those guys last year, and we know what happened with that. Williams looked legit when he was healthy. We're really excited about having Williams back this year. Renfro as, as, a, as a slot guy, great. You know, who's that missing piece? Um, now it all lines up. First-round draft pick, do you agree with me that first pick has to be a wide receiver, yes or no? Oh, most definitely. Everybody knows that – that we, we bro, if we don't get a wide receiver <clears throat> it, it, with the with pick twelve, or I mean, unless we do something crazy like trade up to go grab, uh, what's your boy's name, the linebacker or the tweener? Everybody's talking about, um. You talking about uh, from Clemson? No, the he, he the linebacker probably gonna be picked up by the Giants. Pick number four. He's tops of everybody's. You know Murray and Queen. They're all later. But what's the top linebacker in the draft? What's his name? I can't believe I'm blanking like this. <laughs> You're not talking about Kenneth Murray, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trolling you Don't right get now. I've like seen it. I've seen if you can get Murray, it. You, but no, this you're talking about Isaiah. Like you're, t- different posi- you're talking about yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons. Simmons. Yeah, okay. Correct. I'm just trolling now, you. Do something crazy <laughs> like trade up to get Isaiah Simmons. If they do something crazy to to jump up there and and to grab uh, Jeffrey Akuda, or however you say his name. Um, I won't complain about that. If you get the top corner or the top linebacker in the draft, you know, and you or something, something, you're making a big splash move. Hey, whatever. But beyond that, if that doesn't happen and you sit and wait till twelve and you don't get CD Lamb, Jerry Judy, or Rugs, mm-hmm. one of them's gonna be on the board, bro. Yeah, one of them's gonna be on the yeah. board. So, um, if you don't do that, then what are you doing? I, I mean, Mayock, he made the comment that he doesn't like, uh, that that you don't get much production from wide receivers in the first round because, you know, it's a steep learning curve from college to the pros and blah, blah, blah. That's smoke. <laughs> That's bullshit. Because um, I'm, I'm praying we get City Lamb. That's who I want. I do too. You know? That 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 dude's routes are that, crisp that, and clean, dog. Crisp and clean. Right. That's who. You know, right, it, that's who I want. It's hey. it's smoke and it's not smoke though. Mayox, Mayox had that philosophy for a long time since before he was a general manager. But the fact of the matter is, you don't go out there and get Quickowski and get Lint, Littleton and uh, and still feel like you need to go up from twelve to get another linebacker. Those two moves in free agency right there have to satiate Paul Gunther. Right. They have to, and, and, and Moro and Lee have to fill out the rest of that squad. You got to have to make do with that because at twelve, uh, you know, and Mayock and Gruden are both saying it. They're, they stood pat with Derek Carr. That wasn't smoke, as it turns out. Um, and, and they've all been saying you got to get this guy weapons. Now, who did they go out and get as a wide receiver in free agency? It's not Aguilar. Aguilar's not the missing piece in that wide receiver core. So, <laughs> right. 
Hell no, nah, it ain't Aguilar. So, hey, but you know what? He could be something decent of special teams or down, you know, further down the depth chart and wide receiver. But no, yeah. he's not a number one receiver. Well, it's depth there too because the last two years, I mean, the last three years, I think even it's fair enough to say we've had issues at depth at wide receiver. Last year was a struggle. The year before that was a struggle. I mean, thinking in 2018, I don't know if I'm if I'm right, but there was. Uh, when we went up against the Giants, we didn't have like one starting wide receiver healthy that game. It was it was a very odd. And I think that was like when we first started to see Waller too come into the fold. I could be wrong there, but you had like uh, man, you had like Johnny Holton starting that game. You had a lot of randos starting in that game. So and I mean, I think Aguilar is there for depth. But I, regardless of what Mayock's philosophy is, you know they said it. They got to get weapons for Derek Carr. I know this is a stacked draft for wide receiver, but but you'd really be blowing it if you don't go up there and get one of those three, like you said. I'm with you. CD Lamb is my dude. That's the guy I want to see. But if you pick any of those three wide receivers, I'm not going to be disappointed. I'm not going to be disappointed. Right. Uh, a major. This is the stat. You know, Josh DeBo, He always puts out stats that. Oh, Raider Nation hates Josh DeBo, bro. <laughs> I love that dude. I love that dude, bro. He he's that he's that teacher. We were talking about teachers. He's that teacher that always tells you the shit you don't want to hear, but you got to hear it. Right. You got to hear it. But you got to hear it. You got to hear it. And so, but here's the glaring stat that Josh DeBo just put out the other day. Um, he said. For the last three years, four years, three or four, uh, Derek Carr has been ranked five or higher, or I should say the Raiders, not Derek Carr, because he don't fucking catch the ball. (laughs) The Raiders has been fucking ranked five or higher, five, four, three, two, one, uh, in drops, bro. Um... We got to put an end to that shit. You know what I mean? It's hard for Derek Carr to fucking win a game for us. We're sitting here complaining about Derek if the motherfucking wide receivers keep dropping the goddamn ball. Agreed. So with that being the, so with that being the case, we got to draft to put an end to that. Renfro, he rarely drops the ball. He's a he lock. dropped a few last season, but he catches the ball. Williams was injured, but when he was healthy, he was catching the ball. So we were making moves. Antonio Brown catches the ball. We didn't know he was going to fucking go nuclear (laughs) and act a fucking fool on us before the season started. (laughs) He dropped the ball. (laughs) (laughs) He he dropped more than the ball. He (laughs) dropped the fucking brain. But now he's he's hoping they drop charges. Right now he's begging all thirty-two teams. I'm sorry, please, nah, my fucker, you to fuck that shit up. Um, but anyway, it is time for us to draft a motherfucker that catches the ball. And, and to me, from what I've seen, that's CD Lamb, bro. If he's still on the board when we get there. I don't care. Ruggs is fast. Yes, that's true. Um, and he catch. I mean, Ruggs got hands. Uh, Jerry Judy runs elite routes. Yeah, that's true. And he catches the ball, too. Don't get me wrong. I ain't saying he don't have hands. But C.D. Lamb, bro, he be out there making phenomenal, twisting his body, contorting in all kind of crazy ways to catch the ball. And then once he comes down on his feet, he's bowling over, motherfuckers. Yeah, and it's the want to and the desire to get downfield. I love that motherfucker for that shit. That's what I love about um, Lamb. He the- he catches the ball like a raider. Like by any means, he's up there just mm-hmm. went baby. Right. And then and then in this this Gruden system, which is designed of a lot of short passes, death by a thousand paper cuts. This is a guy that's going to kill you after the catch. He's not. I don't want to compare him to Tim Brown because he's a different type of player. But his catch and run in right. that regard is similar because he will just leave you behind. You know, it's a five yard slant yeah. route, goes for 45. Why? Because CD Lamb, that's what he does. That's, I want to see this kid. The problem is, is every fan base is saying the same thing we are right now. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's hope he's there. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, that's all we could do is hope that he's there, bro. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. 
there's a few teams um, that's in front of us. I mean, shit, that need a wide receiver. A- anybody could use a CD Lamb. You know, I don't care what your receiving core looks like right now. Anybody could use a CD Lamb. Um, oh, so we'll see. Hopefully, he's sitting there. But I, it, even if he's not sitting there, um. Judy or Ruggs, by that time, will still – one of the three will be there. Mm-hmm. And, and to be truthful, I mean, I won't be mad at any – you know, as long as we get one of the top three receivers at 12, I won't be mad. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about the Raiders jumping up to get Lamb if they have to? I mean, if that's their guy, yeah, we'll, we'll settle for any of the three. But if that's their guy – you know, how do you feel about that? Giving up more draft assets or even a player to move up and get CD Lamb above all all others? Would you be happy to see that? Um, or are you more Stan Pat and take no, one of the other two? No, I wouldn't be happy to see that because I believe that um, if you can't get Lamb, Judy, or uh, or Rugs is a decent consolation prize. Um, if we're moving up, I want you to move up to get one of the elite prospects. If you're moving up to go get Akuda, if you're moving up to go get Isaiah, if you're moving up to go get, oh, what's, what's the edge rusher? Uh, what's his name? Uh, he's the best player in the draft. Everybody figuring he's going number two. I mean, if you do something like that to give up some draft capital, I could say, okay. You know, but at wide receiver, you're talking about um, like you're talking about uh, you're talking about Chase Young out of Ohio State, right? Yeah, yeah. if you move <laughs> up and go get Chase, he's a beast. <laughs> okay, wow, that, yeah, that give up some, dra- yeah, yeah. If you do something like that, okay, I see you. But um, to be honest, I don't think the Raiders are moving up at all. If they do anything, I think they're going to pick at twelve. Whoever falls to them. And that um, 19, if they're going to move, I think they're going to move back more than move up. So mm-hmm. that's just that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that's what I would do. Um, I'm a proponent of uh, move up to go get the guy that you want uh, and uh, – stand pat and pick the best player available at your pick. I don't like I don't like moving back and this is why. When you move back, what you're saying is you're willing to um settle for less talent. You know? Um and I don't like that. I don't like moving back. And I know Mayock and them they, they they believe in in draft capital because they believe they could get somebody, you know, more picks and get and they could pick that diamond in the rough like Hunter Renfro. Nobody expected him to be who he developed into being. But me, uh, you know, I, I look at it like, man, find out who the best guy is um, and go and get him. Uh, because there's there's just no telling what uh, I mean. How often does a fourth round draft pick or fifth round draft pick pan out? And so, to me, you're going to give up uh, a first round draft pick to pick up a, a second and maybe a, a third or a fourth or some shit like that. It's not worth it to me. I would rather go ahead and have the opportunity to pick the highest talented player that I could pick, who I, whoever I believe is the best player available, regardless of position. Like, we don't need anybody on the defensive line right now, but I would pick Chase Young if we could get him. Yeah. You feel me? I feel you, man. <laughs> I feel you, man. You know, bro. It's it's uh. So, go ahead. Nah. <laughs> well, nah. Oh, oh, you said nah. You said so. Yeah, man. So that that's just my stance on it. I'm, 
a lot of people there are proponent of trading back so they could, you know, acquire more picks. You know, for example, when we picked up your boy um, Clee, everybody was like, "Man, you could have traded back and got Clee." Well, I mean, you might have been able to trade back and get Clee, and you might be able to pick up some more value. And, but if you believe the Klee is your guy, then pick your fucking guy, bro. Get yeah. your guy. Get your dude. Because you, know you, don't, you don't know what's being talked about dude. in those war rooms. They, they, they're hearing things as they're going down. That dude might have been picked up two picks later, uh, and you can't get back to right. that pick. You, you don't know what's going to happen. So they got their dude. I think Klee's a great leader. The dude's strong. He's country strong, bro. That's what we say. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to be a Raider for a while, dog. So I'm glad you picked up the phone, bro. I have seen it. I'm, I'm glad you oh, picked. Yeah, I'm, you. I'm, I'm glad you picked up the phone. Uh, some people probably think this is a strange number, but you you know the hotline when it when it comes on your phone. So um, I got to get oh, up out of here. Just for fun on my phone. There you go. Hey, hey, you got to cop one of them hats too. We got the new hats that just came out. I'll send you uh, send you a little little preview. But um, check it out, man. Uh, before we get out of here, you got any words of advice to these pillagers during these tough times? Yeah, man, be a Raider fan, regardless. You know what I mean? Don't let motherfuckers talk shit about your squad because we didn't had a little bit of shit. I mean, swagger boisterously is what I think. Yeah. That's my word of advice. You know, don't give what the defense, don't take what the defense give you. Fucking take what you want. Yeah. The Raiders do. <laughs> hey, I would tell people uh, to follow you online, but you don't have social media, so don't follow Gent because yeah, if, f- if you're following him in uh-huh. real life, he'll bust you in the mouth. Or if you're a Raider fan, <laughs> he might hand you a beer. I don't know, but don't follow him. That's weird. <clears throat> don't be following him around the block and shit. <laughs> hey, man, it's good talking yeah. to you. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you off the air here in a couple more days. To check on you again and just see make just do a sanity check, man. That's what we've been doing. Oh yeah, don't worry about me. I'm I'm gonna be straight, straighter than straight. Yeah, tell Che uh, keep his head up. Uh, no, he trying to get out the house. Bobby Wasabi. Keep his head up. I know he want to get out the house. Everybody want to be in the crow's nest. Um, but but stay safe. You know what I mean. Uh, I'd rather see him safe than sick. So and pray for Kane, y'all. Kane's out there on the streets doing the damn thing. He works outdoors, and so you know he's he's uh he's he's no spring chicken like like myself. I'm getting up there too, and uh, you know I, I pray for Kane. He's out there on on the front lines doing this. Um, so all of you people, man, that are out there, my lady, uh, she's, 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 she's in radiology. She's doing chest x-rays. She's working with these COVID patients oh, every man. single day on the front lines. All of you guys, all you first responders, anyone helping with the emergency services, we appreciate you and what you're doing. Um, cause you guys got to go home at night and you, a lot of you have family. So, um, I pray for y'all. We thank you for everything that you're doing. This is a very strange time. And uh, we're just glad to, to be able to get on the air and, and maybe distract you for you know an hour a day or so. So we're going to keep doing these home invasions, gent. Uh, thanks for letting me invade your eardrums tonight, as we as we do so often. But um, you're a good friend of mine. I appreciate no, you, man. Thank you for invading my eardrums, bro. I didn't know you had uh, started. Um, I'm gonna have to listen to. Uh, yesterday's in home invasion, um, but I was going crazy having to listen to all these other shows. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, I needed some pillage and podcast in my life. Don't get me wrong; everybody has their own little flavor of podcast. But a lot of people, you know, they try to make it sound too much like the radio, bro. And for us, it's just like real ass conversation between two fans or however many when the whole crew is there it, it, it's like the the sports talk you get when you're standing around the water cooler so that's what i miss standing around the ice chest bro get it right <laughs> yeah well, um, i said why you at work your water cooler you know but yes the ice chest <laughs> but I, i'll be i'll, I'll give uh, our listeners kind of a peek behind the curtain here to be real, man, I've really unplugged. Like I barely just got back on social media yesterday. 
Um, this morning we put out the the groat uh, votes. We put we put out the first two votes, um, and it was really you. You called me over the weekend, and you're like, "What the hell are y'all doing? Get back in the studio." And I was like, "Yeah, it just ain't going to be the same. Like, I can't. We, we're not all here in person." And you're like, "None of that matters. Everybody understands right now. Things are strange. You guys got to do the damn thing." So. I was telling you about these home invasions. So that's what we're doing, man. We're doing these, trying to do one every single night as much as I can. And uh, that's going to lead into Sunday. We are getting the gang together. We are going to do something online. It'll be a very stripped down version of the podcast. But I'm hoping, gents, right? I'm hoping you guys will all understand and give us a pass. And, and, um, you know, we won't have all the the fancy, cute little segments and production elements that you guys are used to. But hopefully we crack some jokes, have a good conversation, entertain you guys for an hour or so. And uh, talk some Raiders football and, and, you know, just get back to, to what we love talking about because I need to stop listening to this damn talk radio, man. It's got me real paranoid, dog. It's got me real paranoid. Bro. Hey, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell you like this. Bro, we don't listen to the Pillaging Podcast for the production. We listen to the Pillaging Podcast because of the people that is on the show, bro. Appreciate that. So thank you for, for doing it in the first place. And nobody's going to care that we don't got the little bubbles going up in, uh, behind <laughs> uh, Che when he's doing his thing and nobody's yeah. tripping on none of that shit. Yeah. The, the green screen, none of that. Yeah. We listen to the show because of you, Che, Bobby, uh, Kane, occasionally hearing a funny story from Jen. Um, that's why we listen to the sto- we listen to the show, bro. Yeah. And so, yeah, we was it was uh, it was like going through a drought, the drought <laughs> season when you wasn't doing it. So, you know, you got to give us our fix, bro. I hear you, man. Well, we're back, and that's because of you, dog. So, thank you for being that teacher and getting in my face and telling me what I what I when I needed to hear. I appreciate you, man. You're you're a great motivator. <laughs> um, you're welcome. <laughs> but I'm gonna let you go, man. Um, but, hey, let, let's let's run the music, and uh, let's tell these people like we always do about this time. My name's Kenny Stapler, and I'm your boy G. Yeah, <laughs> we out here. Peace. Go. Make sure you tune in Sunday, y'all. We won't be live, um, but you can check that. iTunes, Spotify, you know the damn thing. Let's get it.